Try to imagine that you're going to a meeting. It's an important meeting. And someone hands you the agenda. And you notice you are the very last on the agenda again. <coughs> this time you ask your manager, why? Why are you always last? Your manager say, that's just the way it works. To be able to understand what you have to say, we all have to listen to everybody else, and then you can do your job. Hmm. Okay, this works for a while. But meeting after meeting, where you're still the last person on the agenda, you start getting frustrated. Because being the last person on the agenda often means that you run out of time, you have to rush through the things you have to say, and you don't have that much influence what's in the rest of the meeting. How does that make you feel? Maybe you feel inefficient, impatient, or not appreciated. I'm a software tester, and I test software. So I have to wait for someone else to code the software, build the system, then I can test it. If developers are late, I run out of time. I used to be frustrated about waiting for other people to complete their job before I could start doing mine. So I wanted to find a way to change this so I could be on the agenda from the beginning of the meeting, not only in the end. After I tried this, I realized that now I'm not only no longer the last person on the agenda, we actually also built better software. I would say we have improved our quality without testing more, without testing better or deeper, but simply by making my work more independent from other people's work. Someone, often software is produced this way. We have someone write some specification, hard weighted or light weighted, then we have someone developing the software system, and then we pass it on to the tester who tests it. If you work agile, this might be small iterations. If you work waterfall, it's large sections separated from each other. And the tester can start to test or write test specifications before someone else has written the requirements, they have reviewed it, everything. And you can't start test on running software because before it has been coded, it has been installed, the test data need to be ready, your test environments need to be ready. So very often I hear testers complaining that test is never prioritized. I don't have time to complete my job because I'm waiting for other people to complete their job. Sentences like, do they expect me to work all night and something like that is very often said when testers are together. I think this is a huge problem in test. The pro problem is that someone, sometimes testers, sometimes developers, sometimes managers, they think of tests as something that happens over here after the development. I think we, quality assurance and tests should also be helping the team build the right software in the first attempt. So we should stop thinking as test as something that happens in the end, but start considering as something that could happen uh, towards the whole development phase. So to change this, we need to consider test as more than verifying requirements. Test is also an investigation of the system we are going to build. So it's not just investigation of the system we have built. If we investigate before we develop the system, we will end up with better quality because we will be more likely to produce the right software in the first attempt. So all this about being the first person on the agenda, it's not just because I like to be first. It's more about we need to improve the quality as a team. And I bet some of you right now are thinking, how can she start 
investigating a system if you don't know all the details. I would like you to think of this. If I told you I was going to build a house for my family, I bet all of you could start asking questions about my new house before you see the requirements, the specifications, the detailed drawings. You could ask me uh, where do you want to place the house, how large should it be, what materials would you like to use, why do you want to build a new house, what's wrong with your old house. All good questions that could help me and my family clarify what house we would like to build. So it's the same way I think of software system. We can start asking questions without knowing all the details from the beginning. So based on your experience with people and with houses, you can start asking me questions about my house. And it's exactly the same we can do with software. So when I start investigating my system, I consider my software system as this new, not yet built house. And I ask myself, will I be able to ask some questions about this before I see the requirements? And the answer to that question is almost always, yes, I am. I call this investigation to create a test design. It's just a name that I use to describe what I do when I investigate a system. A test design is my personal document of my work before I have all the details. When I create a test design, I, I have some rules. I would like to share them with you. First, I use templates as inspiration. Second, I note my questions in my documentation as I go along. And the last rule is that I always start with a 30 minutes brainstorm. The first rule is that I use templates as inspiration. I have participated in a lot of conferences, a lot of different uh, test classes, and I have gathered the best that works for me. I have two of them here, my two favorites. This is the first one. It's called the little black book on test design. So test design is not a word that I came up with. This book is a lot of good ideas that can help you generate test ideas. So, for example, this is from the book. Um, the first section here is a lot of things about the product. And then you also have the business, you have usability and stuff like that. So whenever I'm going to build a new feature or a new software, I will just go through this list and see should I consider about usability, for example? Is it important or not? If the system we are building doesn't have a user interface, it might not be important. Then I just skip this step and go to the next one. So this helped me generate ideas, uh, and I don't have to start from zero every time I should uh, start on a test design. Another model I use, some of you probably know it, it's from Michael, uh, James Buck and Michael Bolton's is, it's called SFDIPOT, also known as San Francisco Depot. <laughs> the words, uh, uh, the letters SFDI, is the, the words from the, the first letter in each word around this. I use this for a brainstorming uh, Kickstarter. So, for example, if I were going to build my new house, I could consider structure. What kind of structures could we have? What kind of materials should it be? How should it be built? Function, which kind of functions should my house have? So this is a help for me to come around every details of a new feature or a new software system. I don't say that this would work for everyone, but to me it's helpful. And both of those examples I have here are free and can be downloaded. I have the links in my slides. The second rule is, I keep my questions in my documentation. Very often I use mind maps like this when I document my test design. 
It's the way it works for me. You could use Excel, Notepad, Word, uh, paper and a pen, whatever you like. But the important thing here is that I put in my questions as I go along. And then when I find the answers, it might be I talk to someone, it might be that I, f I have some requirements written, and then I find the answers in here. I will keep it as answers, questions and answers in here. Because it's a documentation of my personal process. And later, sometimes half a year after we built this system, someone is asking me, uh, why do we don't have this and this feature? Or why is this thing red or something like that? And almost every time I can go and find, I can say, oh, just look up. And then I in here have, I actually asked the project manager or the usability expert how it should be. And she said it should be like this. Another good thing is that uh, this is a real example. So you, you can see that I put in who said it. Jesper here has fixed this. Uh, ALJ say we should sort on it. Sometimes I get different answers from different people. So if I keep both in here, I also have a documentation of who said what and, and who agree and who are, are not aligned in this situation. Last rule. I always start with a 30-minute brainstorm. So before I have any details, requirements, I can sit on my chair, sit, take a, I don't have one like this, I'll use an old-fashioned watch, and say to myself, now I will, in the next half hour, I will put in every information I have today. So I ha don't have a pressure on me that I should get everything in there. I'll just use the next half hour to document everything I know and put in all the questions that I have that I don't have the answers to. It can actually be quite tough to get started. So this is actually the most helpful tip uh, of today, uh, that you can, you can al always start with your questions. Even if you don't have all the answers, you can always start with a 30-minute brainstorm of all your actions. The trick here is that when you have done this, the next day or day after or next week, when someone is talking about this, you have your brain kick-started. And you will say, ah, that was what I was wondering about. Or, and then you can go back and put it in there. Sometimes I use uh, put up uh, something like this for each feature. And then I put them behind my desk. And then I just write in uh, every time I get some new information on each feature. Actually, sometimes I hear someone talking about something and I say, uh, is this related to this feature? No, 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 it's related to this. Oh, OK, that makes sense for me. So I can, it can help me clarifying what we are going to build. Over time, my test design grows. I put in it more and more information. And they become my most valued document in my work. I once was so happy about my test design that I started sharing it with the other team members. I, I'm, I'm so happy with them because they reflect my process and all the information that I know so I don't have to keep it in my head. Uh, this is an example of what I gave them. It turned out that this is not very simple to someone who hasn't been a part of the process. This is my, it's simple to me, it really is. I know exactly what all the short terms here is. I know exactly, um, uh, I have folded in the requirements. I have a lot of information here that if I should go and find it in other documentation, other documentation I would have to go a lot of different places. But I have learned that I can't share this with people who wasn't a part of the process creating this. If I want that, I need to bring them into the process, take them to a whiteboard, and maybe start from scratch saying, we have this feature called table list viewing. I'm considering testing this, this, this. What do you say? Then they can understand it. But I can't share it with other people in a format like this. If I need someone from the business to understand all those brilliant magic ideas I have, I take it out and put it in a Word document or something, write an email, put it in a table and saying, uh, I have seen this, 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 what do you think? 
So it's not a good idea to share your very personal note in a document like this, even though it works for me. Now I have found a way to be on the agenda from the beginning of the meeting. But I also need to convince my team, my management, that this is a good idea. And here I have a simple trick for you. If you are a tester and you are asked to estimate a test task, someone saying, how much time do we need to test this feature, this page, this system, whatever, I always split up my estimates. It's not important how much time I put on each. The important thing is that I have my test design as a separate task. So I can use this to explain to management or my team. I have a test task that I can put on the agenda from the beginning of the meeting because I don't have to wait for requirements to be reviewed. I don't have to wait for code to be compiled. I can start with this task from the beginning. And in that way, I have much more influence on what we are building and we actually end up building much better products. When I do this investigation, I imagine myself walking around in an imaginary software system. So this software system that we have not yet built is like a house. And I go towards the house, maybe I go around it, open one of the doors, and then I take a look inside. And with me, I have this test design document, and I document what I see. Um, yeah, I, I think myself as going around and lightening up the rooms in this imaginary software system. And the more I succeed doing this before, or maybe while we are developing the better software products we are actually producing on my team. So still, it's not about me being first, it's about getting the better software quality from the whole team. I would like you to ask yourself, will you also be able to start asking questions to a feature or a software system before you know all the details? And maybe the next time you find yourself frustrated about waiting for documents to be written, waiting for developers to code something so you can test it. Try to tell your manager or your team that you will want to create a test design and then start with this 30 minutes brainstorm before you have anything else than just a simple idea of what you are going to build. I love this way to work. It means that I'm less out of influence. I'm um, more efficient and I'm happier about my work. Um, but best of all, I think my team is producing better software when they have a tester on the team than without a tester on the team. So I think all of you will be able to do the same with some of those simple tricks. And that's all for me. Thank you.